Hi, this is Doug Brunke, CEO of Global Chamber, and I'm with Mike Patterson, shareholder at Polsonelli. Welcome, Mike. Thanks. Uh, today we're talking about getting all of the legal uh, buttons checked uh, when you're doing business in Mexico and Latin America. You obviously have a lot of business experience in the region. Uh, a lot of that's based off the fact that you're an outstanding attorney there. Today we're going to do so. a little bit more deeper dive on, on the legal side of it. Um, but, but I'd also like to ask this question that's kind of been burning for me is, I mean, you're clearly so passionate and excited about the country and the region. What, what drives that? Why, what's given you that, you know, that enthusiasm for doing um, business there? Don't get me started about the food and the music, which is very passionate for me. I love to sing in Spanish and have a friend that taught me that, and that has really continued to drive some things. But um, I went to a language school years ago in Costa Rica, and I learned, obviously, a lot of language and culture. I've been a student of that for years, raised two kids um, in Mexico City, and they love Latin America as well. It's still in their hearts. Um, uh, but, uh, but one thing I realized as I was learning Spanish is, is it is not just a uh, independent, uh, are you fluent in a language, but it, what language means is the ability to have friendships in another. Uh, it's like the, a new door being opened and, oh, there's a whole world out there that I can now have a best friend. And my best friend in the whole world, this guy named Alejandro Luna that is middle class, lives on the north side of Mexico City, and we do music together. And he's, he is my best friend of the world. And that has driven uh, so much for me. And, uh, but this opening up of through language and culture of the ability, uh, ability to negotiate what you do in English, you can do in another language. What you, uh, the friendships, the love, and the learning, they have taught me so much that has enriched my life in terms of my worldview. That, that's fantastic. Are there, uh, through that enlightenment and through going, passing through that door, have you noticed because of that uh, special legal issues uh, for Mexico that maybe other countries don't have and certainly might be surprising for executives as they, as they enter the country? Right. There's a lot of Latin American common issues that actually even bleed over to other parts of the world, the Philippines. Um, I have clients in Estonia and Italy and Spain, and and uh, my partner. I used to do Asian. Now she does Karen Dickinson, uh, and uh, France. Garrett Steenblick in her office as well. Uh, there's a lot of common issues that we look at together, which are uh, the formalization of documents that are going abroad. There's this thing called the Hague Convention on uh, on, on documents, the Apostille Convention that a lot of people w may know better under that word. Apostille is, is this document that our, our Secretary of States in ev every uh, jurisdiction in the U.S. will give you that it's really pretty and it goes on top and you can't take out the staple or it invalidates the document, but it says this document that was notarized, attached, can be now accepted in this other foreign jurisdiction. However, there are jurisdictions even in Latin America that don't, or that weren't signatories to that convention, and so you have to go to the actual consulate to get it done. Or there are certain levels of transactions that have to be done before a consulate that can't be done by an apostille. I'm, uh, recently working on a certain type of a real estate transaction in Costa Rica that requires that the consul um, witness a power of attorney in the, in, uh, we're in this case going to the uh, LA consulate uh, to, to get that done. So uh, the handling of documents sometimes is an issue, but we do that very simply. But uh, there are and the tax presence issue in almost every jurisdiction, not only in Latin America, but other places in the world, uh, there are certain activities that if I, and it's different for every country, but if I cross this threshold, now the taxing authority in that country um, takes jurisdiction over me for tax purposes. And depending upon the jurisdiction, they may look, as the U.S. does, at your worldwide income, 
and then you try to credit off between, if you have a tax treaty between the U.S. and that country, I paid those taxes at a higher rate in that country, Mexico, let's say, and now I'm going to credit those against my taxes here. But you, in, in many cases, you don't want that uh, because uh, you, can, you can get rates down at a better rate if you do it a different way or limit the activity in a subsidiary in that country, et cetera. Labor is a huge issue throughout Latin America typically and very much the case in Mexico. Labor is heavily in favor of the employee. Uh, has some, but there's costs that that puts on the whole system. And actually in Mexico, companies will frequently bifurcate their operations into a services company, uh, the Doug Brunke Labor Services Company that serves the Doug Brunke um, operations company that has no employees but has all the con uh, contracts and the profit, but the labor service is like your own uh, labor services company that serves your other one. Um, there are also constitutional provisions that require a uh, 13th month payment like around the holidays uh, to employees and and uh, then liquidation at the end of their time as an employee. Depending on the number of months they get there, they get a defined payment. And then lots of deductions required by law for this, that, and the other. And um, handling labor can be done very uh, easily with the, with the right help. Uh, but if you just go in willy-nilly and haven't made any plans, you may be deemed to have, oh, that person's been deemed to be my employee in Mexico. I didn't intend that, but they are. And I may have tax presence now, and I have two problems to call Mike and his team about and figure out, but it would have been a lot cheaper to have done it with some planning. Gotcha. So you, I've heard you say this, but I think it was in another video even, uh, look at opportunities, not obstacles. Everything right. you've just talked about could be perceived as obstacles, obstacles, and yet you've got your hands on it. And so if somebody's going to come into Mexico knowing that these things exist, now you can more clearly see what the opportunities are. Right. And, well, let's talk about a positive. Um, the, uh, in coming into the U.S., uh, we can talk about this in another video, too, on investment, but uh, securities law, heavier here in the U.S. than it is in Mexico, but control of the company, if you joint venture with someone, um, a lot more complicated in Mexico than here. We have this thing called a parent agency in the U.S. that says, if I... If I'm the president and CEO of XYZ Company and I have a business card, you, you have probably the right to rely on that if I sign a contract that says I obligate XYZ to do this. Um, in Mexico, it doesn't matter that even I may be the president and CEO of XYZ uh, uh, SRL in Mexico, if I don't have the express powers and that 40 pages of corporate documents that say that I can enter contracts, that I can settle labor disputes, that I can sell the company, that I can, uh, uh, you know, deal with this. There's five separate categories of powers in Mexico. If I don't have uh, those express powers or I only have these two or these three, um, you need to be, th then that contract may not be valid. Another issue is in there you have capacity to contract if you come to the U.S., uh, even as a tourist, you could sign a contract. But if you're down in Mexico and let's say you're, you're intending to be on the board of directors of your joint venture down there and you want to sign something while you're down there, you better have entered the con country on the right visa status for that signature really to be valid. And so there's just a number, a, a few little gotchas, but simple for planning. And there's, as long as you're using some little bit of help, you'll get it all right. You're a lot of help. Mike, thank you for your time today to go through some of the legal questions. There's probably a few more that you haven't talked about today, but we really appreciate you uh, sharing at least some of them. And uh, if you're looking forward to um, uh, more information, we've got a couple more videos coming up. And of course, you know, contact uh, either the Global Chamber or Mike directly with additional questions. Mike, again, thank you. Thank you.